Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am not the Dread Pirate Roberts. <laughs> but, uh, hello. Uh, my name is Garrett Wong. Um, you may know me from Star Trek Voyager. One of the side jobs that I've been doing is being moderator of different panels. Maybe anybody, anybody show up at the Guardian of Galaxies panel? Yeah! Today? If you were there, you were lucky enough to see me being flipped over in judo style by Michael Wilker. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm pretty sure oh, Karen no, no, Thomas no, no, will not do no. that to me today. Um, so, somebody else. Uh, what, what do you but do for I just want to say that um, and Princess so he gets Bride up and starts pounding on was a huge, huge movie in my, in my, yeah, movie going for uh, one of my favorite, probably, films of all time. And... Um, having the chance to moderate this panel is something that um, I I'm going to be a little bit fanboyish about, so uh, I'm very, very happy to be here. And um, backstage, I just found out that Carrie has actually written a book called As You Wish about the making of Princess Bride. So I think all of you need to go out there and pick up a copy of that. Um, I'm very excited to, to get a copy myself. Uh, so without further ado, please, uh, you've seen him in Saw. You've seen him in Twister, Robin Hood, Men in Tights, but most well-known as Wesley and the Princess Bride. Please put your hands together for actor and best-selling author, Carrie Elwes. Actually, in Los Angeles, yes. there was a restaurant called Avotra Sante. Okay. And you actually, um, I was eating there one night, and you were at a table next to me. For real? Yes, for real. And I so wanted to come over and go, oh my god, it's you! <laughs> but I didn't, because I knew that you were mid bite and you were in your eating dinner, and I think probably. Most Wait, actually, I think I just spilled water all down my front. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how I peed myself. <laughs> Which, yeah, go ahead, get that picture. <laughs> That's the one. We, we kindly request you do not post this on Facebook or any other social media that can I'll be seated for the rest of this whole interview. I'm sorry to say. All right. Oh, there we go. There we go. To join, I'm going to match you, so that now it looks you. all, you know, awesome. There we go. But, um, yeah, that was yours. Do you remember that restaurant? It was on La Brea. It was like I a health food restaurant. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I was very shy and I'm nervous, and I wanted to say something. You can always come up and say hi. Well, I'm, I'm thank always you. Uh, amenable to meeting people. So. I appreciate that. That's really nice. Okay. Um, can we start off with a few just questions about sure. Princess Bride? Okay. Um, Anything, any type of mishaps or anything on Princess Bride that happened that, that would be... Oh, yeah, quite a few. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite uh, accident prone, which is, you know, uh, not a lot of people know that, but I am. But, and, and on this film, uh, as you know, I had to learn how to sword fight, and Mandy Patinkin as well. And uh, Rob Ryan, the director, got the very best trainers for us. We had these wonderful guys, Bob Anderson and Peter Diamond, and they both were the guys who came up with all the lightsaber uh, sequences in all the Star Wars films. So he got the very best of the best. These guys were amazing. And um, I had to do a scene uh, with Robin Wright on the top of the mountain where we roll down the hill and I say those three words. You know that scene, yeah? <laughs> and, and Andre, who was uh, 450 pounds and, and seven, you know, six foot, I don't know, what was he saying? Hey, he what was he, six foot eight? Something like that, enormous, right? And he couldn't fit in any of the vans or the trucks that took us all to the set. And so we were shooting this scene in the beautiful mountains of Derbyshire, and the production manager, who, uh, who tried to figure out how to get Andre to the set, walked up to him, and, and every time he spoke to Andre, you had to talk to him like this, you know, hey, hey Andre, how are you today? And so, uh, and Andre called everybody boss, which is hilarious when you're, you know, six foot seven or whatever. <laughs> And um, so the production manager said, Andre, how do you get around on your farm in North Carolina? Because we can't get you up to the location. You can't fit in the van that we have. 
And Andre said, I use an ATV boss. <laughs> and so we, you know, it's not like there were a lot of all-terrain vehicles in Britain in 1986. So they searched for one. And if you Google image it on your phone, just Google image Andre the Giant and all-terrain vehicle. And you'll see this beautiful little three-wheeler red all-terrain It looks like a tricycle under him. It's hilarious. <laughs> and Andre, you, I mean, he was happy to begin with. Once he got on this thing, he was beaming. He was so happy. He'd just ride around the set. Forget going to work. He would just ride around all day, <laughs> zooming past people. We've never seen a giant move so far. He'd go, <laughs> right on the set, very loud, right? And I'm prepping to do this scene, and he rolls up on this thing, and he goes, Hey, boss. I go, Hi, Andre. How are you? You like my toy? <laughs> I go, It's great, Andre. It looks like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. You want to try it? <laughs> I said, Andre, I don't think so. I've got to do the sequence now, and I, I, I don't know how to... Okay. <laughs> and he took off. And this went on. We shot this scene over a period of three days. Second day, comes up. Hey, boss. Yes, Andre. You want to drive my toy? <laughs> I, I, I really... <laughs> Final day, third day, comes up to me. He goes, hey, boss. I go, Andre, you, you want me to try your toy, right? He goes, you know you want to. <laughs> And it's not often that you say no to a giant anyway, right? But here I am, twit that I am, I go, yeah, sure, why not, right? And uh, he gets off this thing, and it goes up another five feet. And, he gets off that. and his bodyguard, his bodyguard, he had a bodyguard. I said to this guy, what are you protecting him from, the flu? <laughs> his bodyguard comes up to me and goes, oh, it's very easy, governor. It's just like a motorbike, clutch pedal, gears, on off switch, Bob's your uncle. That should have told me something. <laughs> because those things are not toys. If you don't know how to use an old train vehicle, you should ne never get on these things. And I'm telling you. So I got on this thing, and it was a lot louder and bigger and after Andre got off it. I flip it into first gear, and I didn't get two feet, and I went over a rock, and I caught my left big toe between the clutch pedal and the rock, and it just oh. snapped like that. It was very, oh. very clean oh. snap. I went, oh, good. Good, I just, I just broke my toe. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, and we hadn't, you know, we're in the first week of shooting, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to be fine because, you know, I have to shoot, shoot all the sword fight scenes, and I can't walk now. I can't even stand. So the crew come running up, the, the set nurse, we had a set nurse, God bless her, she came up to me, and she goes, oh, what happened? What happened? I went, and I was pretending to be like the Black Knight of Monty Python, Holy Grail. I'm like, no, 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 it's nothing. It's just a, just a flesh wound. It's nothing. It's just a scratch. It's just a scratch. It's nothing. She goes, let's take off the boot, let's have a look. And they take off my suede black boot, and there's my toe, and it's all swollen and bent in the wrong direction and everything. And she goes, oh, I think it's broken. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 it's just, it's just sprained. She goes, no, look at it, it's bent in the wrong direction. It's broken. I said, well, what can you do? She goes, I'm, I'm a set nurse. And she opens up a bag. She goes, look, I've got something for an upset tummy. I've got something for an headache. I'm, I don't have nothing to mend broken bones. I'm just a set nurse. I have to go to the hospital for that. I said, but I don't have time. I have to shoot the scene. What can we do? She goes, well, I suppose I could make a makeshift splint. I said, great, do that. So, I mean, she grabbed a couple of twigs, <laughs> she got some masking tape, and she bent it back in place. Oh! It didn't hurt at all. Oh. And, uh, oh. Taped it to my other toes, and then now, now it's so swollen the boot won't fit, and now they had to cut a hole in the boot. And now we go up to the set, and it's the longest drive I've ever taken to a set in the van up to the hill to shoot the scene. And uh, it was myself and the first AD and the set nurse, and I overheard the set nurse turn to the first AD and goes, I think he fell on his head as well. <laughs> so we get to the set, and I'm terrified, right? I, as I mentioned, I thought I was going to get fired. And I see Rob Bryan, the director there, and he's scratching his beard, standing at the monitors. And I, I think to myself, I'm just going to brazen it out. I'm just going to walk right up to him like there's no pain. I'm just going to eat the pain and go up to him and say, you know, just like it's a normal day. So I get out of the van, I put all my weight on my left foot. I walk right up to him, and he... He turns to me, he goes, hey, Carrie, yeah. how you doing? <laughs> and I go, I'm fine, Rob, how are you? He goes, I'm good, but how are you doing? <laughs> and I realized he knew at that point, so I caved. I went, Rob, I'm so sorry. I feel like such a twit. I was fooling around on Andre's all-terrain vehicle. I went over a rock, and I think I may have... <sighs> I think I may have broke up my toe. 
And he goes, I know, I'm the director. You think I don't know what's going on here? Somebody said in a walkie talkie, you're gonna see Carrie can't walk too good. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, Rob, I was terrified to tell you. I thought you'd fire me. And then he goes, well, I'm not gonna fire you. Are you crazy? What, can you walk? I go, yeah, I can walk. He goes, can you run? I go, it'll be very interpretive. <laughs> And luckily, he, he, had, he had scheduled the fight scene for the very end of the film, so we had enough time, Mandy and myself and Chris Guest, to train. So, you know, the fight scene, you know, you'll see I'm a little tender on my foot. But actually, if you look in the film, there's a sequence where I'm running into the fire swamp with Buttercup, and I turn, I say, your pig fiancé can't catch us now, or something like that. And you can see I'm hopping. It's ridiculous. I'm <laughs> hopping into the fire swamp. It's totally ludicrous. And then when I sit down to talk to Buttercup uh, on that log, when I accuse her of being, betraying uh, uh, Wesley, I literally, I sat down like this. <laughs> it was absurd. And um, anyway, so yes, uh, lesson learned. One, always tell the truth, it's easier. Two, never get an old train vehicle if you don't know what you're doing, okay? But you know, it actually worked. Even the, you know, the, the hopping and the way, it, it just to me was like very stylized. Like, oh, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his own style of running. Um, how long did you train with those uh, fencing masters? So we had three weeks before shooting, Mandy and I. We started at nine in the morning till six at night. And we, you know, took a nice lunch break. And uh, But they were very good, these guys. They made us learn each other's parts. And they trained, they worked with Bud Lancaster and Errol Flynn. I mean, they were top guys. And they were tough, too. I mean, every, time, every so often I'd try and get cocky with Peter Dime. I'd go, well, let me see if I can disarm me. And he'd go, Psh. he'd go, I'm sorry? <laughs> My sword would be on the ground. He'd go, So we didn't have to just learn left hand and right hand of our own part. We had to learn each other's. And, and the reason they did that is they said there's less chance for there to be an accident, knowing how accident prone I was, <laughs> for if we learned each other's parts as well. That makes sense. Yeah. And so there actually were no accidents during the actual fencing. No, amazing. Right? amazing. It's amazing. No one got stabbed. It was just the ATV that, that Just the ATV that, that stabbed me. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. um, Mr. Wallace Shawn. Yes. Uh, quite a funny scene between you two uh, when you're dueling at each other. Um, he was nervous playing Fizzini? Is that, is that... I know, crazy. Crazy. Huh. So Wally Shawn, if you don't know who he is, I mean, you know who Vincini is, right? Right? He's, yeah, he's wonderful. And, and, but what you may not know about Wally is he's a very accomplished author and playwright and screenwriter, as well as being an actor. And, and he's incredibly intelligent. I mean, there's a perfect reason why he's cast in this role. He's, he's a Fulbright scholar. He speaks like three or four languages. He speaks ancient Latin. And he teaches in his spare time. He teaches... American and English literature. I mean, he gets paid a lot of money to go on to Oxford and Cambridge and give lectures and stuff like that. And um, our first day, our only day, in fact, was the Battle of Wits scene, right? Where I have very easy dialogue where I go, with them we're at an impasse and, and smell the IOK and all that stuff. But he's got reams of dialogue about, you know, Socrates, Aristotle, morons, all of that, right? <laughs> and I get to the set and he's sweating myself, why is Wally Shawn always the smartest guy in the room? What's he sweating over this, this small scene? It's not like it's hot. It's England, you know? I mean, it's rainy all day, you know? And, and I go, why is he sweating? And I, I couldn't figure it out. And I found out later from him that he thought he was going to be fired because his agent had told him that he wasn't the first choice for Vincini, that Danny DeVito was the, the producer's oh guy. Yeah. And so he was convinced that he was actually just standing in for Danny DeVito and that Danny DeVito was actually just on a plane to pick up the role and have him, you know, fly him home. Which is crazy. I mean, he even went up to, to, to Rob Ryan and said, I don't know why you care for me in this role. I'm not even Thethillian. I'm a Jew from New York. I mean, what? <laughs> and Rob said to him, but you're funny. You, when you yell, your face turns red. It's funny. <laughs> And to this day, I don't think Wally knows how great he is. It's inconceivable. Right? <laughs> He's great, right? He's great in the role. And he told me, he goes, uh, he goes, you know, I can't go anywhere without, if I miss an elevator or drop my keys, someone goes, inconceivable. <laughs> if he's late for a plane, they close the gate, they go, inconceivable. <laughs> he, just, he said it's for the rest of his life. 
And Billy Crystal can never walk into a deli ever again. Ever. Ever. Hilarious. I, uh, not without someone going, you know, want to lean, Mr. Crystal? <laughs> Crazy. Um, I think the, the fans here will probably agree with me. There, there's no way Danny DeVito could have pulled off with Wallace Shawn. Right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And I didn't know that you're such a good mimic. Thank you. you it's, have you been doing this your whole life? Yes. Okay. I, I too, sir. My, awesome. my idol growing up was Rich Little. The oh, sure. Yeah, Rich so Little, yeah. Loved him. Yeah. Um, Billy Crystal, you mentioned him. What was yeah. it like working with Mr. Mr. Crystal? Billy, wonderful. Well, I, I, I grew up watching uh, a lot of these actors that I work with. I was surrounded by incredible talent in this film, as you know. Uh, and I grew up watching a lot of their work. I, I knew Rob Reiner from All in the Family, and, and, and there's a Spinal Tap, and I knew Billy from Soap and Silent Live, right? And when he arrived, he and, and Carol Kane, they came like the first week of October, and they did about seven hours of makeup to, to become Max and Valerie. And uh, I went to watch him put his makeup on. I wanted to see him become Miracle Max, and I was in his, his dressing room with his makeup artist, a guy called Peter Montagna, who works with him on Silent Live. And he had two pictures on the mirror, one of Casey Stengel, and the other, who's the Yankees manager, and, and the other of his grandmother. I said, what, what's that? He goes, that's who Max is going to be, my grandmother and Casey Stengel. <laughs> that's amazing. And then I watched him transform into Max, and it was amazing. They put all these varicose veins on his hands, and then his giant eyebrows, and his cataracts to make a contact lenses to give him cataracts, his big wig. By the time he was done, he was already starting to sound like Max. He was coughing up spit and things like that. He's like, eh, eh, like that. <laughs> and he stayed in character the whole time. Once he became Max, he just stayed as Max. So we would go to the commissary, which is the studio restaurant on the lot where we were shooting at Shepton, and he'd take his tray, and it was just like a high school cafeteria. He took his tray, and he'd say to the lady behind the counter, he goes, um, eh, the shepherd's pie, is it spicy? <laughs> <laughs> And she goes, well, not particularly, sir. And he goes, you don't know my colon. <laughs> Things like that. All day long, right? We get to the set, and I had a very, another easy day where I'm just lying on the slab, and I'm just, I have to say, true love, right? Or if you think it's to blame, it's whatever, you, whatever you prefer. And I'm lying there, and I had very little to do, right? And we rehearsed the scene, and Rob comes up to me, and he goes, Gary, I looked in the monitor and we can see your chest moving, you know? And you're supposed to be mostly dead, so, you know, you gotta be not moving. I said, you want me to hold my breath? He goes, yeah, yeah, hold your breath, yeah. I go, for how long? He goes, don't worry, we're not gonna kill you. <laughs> then he walks over to Billy, and he whispers something in his ear. And I didn't find out later uh, that what he whispered was, just go for it. <laughs> Like, Billy needed any encouragement at this point. He's already, like, doing his bit with the waitress and the commissary. And we start to roll the cameras, and Billy launches into three hours of medieval Yiddish stand-up. <laughs> none of it scripted. All of it improv. Miracle Max doing stand-up. And it's ludicrous. Some of it, there are kids here, I can't repeat it, this crazy stuff about his nephew and the sheep and things like that. I mean, just insane. <laughs> Insane. And of course, uh, Rob, who has a very boisterous laugh, I describe it as a laugh that can be heard in Detroit. He starts laughing right away, and the sound guy comes up to him and says, Governor, you're ruining the tight, you'll have to leave the set. And Rob goes, what do you mean leave the set? I'm the director, how can I leave the set? And they set up a monitor for him in the hallway, so we could laugh out there, right? That took 20 minutes, right? We roll again more medieval stand-up, right? Uh, and I start going, and they replace me with the rubber dummy of, of <laughs> the one that Fezzik's carrying around. They put, yeah. And so I'm only in the close-up in, in that scene. And the only person who stayed in the, in the scene were Andre and, and Mandy. And Andre, bless his heart, could barely understand you, so to him it was all the same, you know. <laughs> he didn't find any of it funny. But Mandy claims, claims he bruised a rib trying to hold in his life. I didn't even know you could do that. But he claimed that was the only injury he sustained on the film. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Billy, okay. Billy um, Crystal. But, uh, before Miracle Max shows up, when you're in the, in the torture den, um, the albino mm. torture master, he starts pit of off, despair. Yes, a pit of despair. Before he, he 
you, you ask him where am I, he's, and he says, the bit of this bit, and he clears his throat. Yeah. Um, that was improvised? That was improvised, as was that wonderful bit where he misses the last four steps. Yes. <laughs> and I lost it. He was so funny, Mel Smith. God bless him. He's no longer with us. Hilarious guy. Is he English? English yeah. comedian. He, he used to have a show called... Uh, not the nine o'clock news, which was kind of like a John Stewart uh, tonight, uh, uh, Daily Show thing. Yeah, and he was brilliant, and I, he was so funny. I actually the whole scene I had to turn away when I was off camera because I was ruining it. I was ruining his, his takes if I looked at his face. You know, he came up with this ridiculous cold sore. It is making you can see it, right? This huge thing, and I just couldn't even look at him. I was like, this is ridiculous, ridiculous. The wig and the white, and he kept doing yeah, that. Doing his like, face, that thing. You know, I was get it. So I said to Rob, can I just, I asked Mel, I go, can I turn around and do my lines? He goes, I'm used to it, it's okay. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, another question about improvised lines. Um, after you best Andre, Andre in that fight, and then you, he's, you basically do the, the choker sleeper hold, and he's out, and you say, you say um, and dream of large women. Or something. Is that, was, it, was that your... Um, no, that's script. Well, oh, that's in the script. Yeah, okay. script. Got you. I yeah, like that line. Um, <laughs> it was a wonderful line. Thank you. Well, well, Bill Goldman, who wrote the book and yes. the screenplay, is an amazing writer. If you, you know, he, this is a guy, if you don't know his work, he did Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, All the President's Men, Marathon Man, and he won an Oscar for a couple of them. And this is his favorite project, Princess Bride. In fact, he's in the process of bringing it to Broadway, which is... Yay! Oh, 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 I'm a little long in the tooth to play. I, I'm more closer to Miracle Max now. No! Which one do no. Would you please? No, you need a kid. But it'd be <laughs> great. But I, I said to him, I said, there's no end of, of possibilities for songs because my favorite line would make a great, anybody want a peanut would make a great song. <laughs> right? right? You could do it. Oh, you're very You smart. could! Everyone would come watch you. It's Broadway. You're very sweet. I'll never forget, I was a kid in England. Uh, and we had a department store called Selfridges. Yes. And you'll appreciate the story because it's a cosplay story in a way. Um, and, and Adam West, right, Batman, was gonna come and greet the kids for a Christmas thing and he was gonna fly on stage on, on a rope and land in front of these hot lights and all the kids came early, we were all sitting on the floor excited, right, and the guy comes out and goes, we're very lucky to have, him, have Adam West here, Batman himself. Give him a nice big welcome, Batman, come on out! And he swings out, and he couldn't fit in the costume or anything. It was too tight for him. He was sweaty, and he went, Hey kids, how you guys doing? And he fell down flat and passed out. And all the kids started going, Batman's dead! No! So I, I always said to myself, I would never push that role too far. <laughs> That's a lesson right there. <laughs> no, that's a great guy, by the way. Uh, yeah, you're in shape, though, Jerry. Uh, I'm telling you right now, if you did that role, everyone here would come watch that Broadway play. Yeah. So, oh my very God. sweet. Batman's dead! Batman's dead! <laughs> He's crying, screaming. Some kid's inconsolable. The curtain comes down. Part of Batman's legs is sticking out. <laughs> really, it's so sad. It's so sad. <laughs> oh my God, the visual! <laughs> You'll never forget that one. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, uh. We have a microphone set up. Uh, uh. Do we have a microphone set up for questions? Yeah. There's one right there. Is there another one on the other side? No. If you'd like to queue up, uh, you can to ask uh, your favorite question of Is Karen. Do uh, don't be shy. What? Come on up. She went to do it? Yeah. See what we have? Yes. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Oh. Can we turn that mic on? Keep, keep talking into it. See if we can... Hello. There you are. There we go. Hi. What's your name? Victoria. Hi, Victoria. How are you? So my question is actually about hot shots. Okay. So I heard there's a story going around where you uh, put a goat in Charlie Sheen's trailer. That's absolutely right. <laughs> you deserved it. <laughs> How did I you filmed get it? How did I get a goat? I, I, you know, in Los Angeles, if you want to get a goat, you can get a goat. <laughs> you know, not very hard. Someone's going to lend you that goat. <laughs> so I put a goat in his trailer. 
And we all hid and waited for him to come in. It was great. Did he ever give you back? No. Because I did it on like the last couple of days of shooting. <laughs> knowing that he wouldn't have an opportunity to get back. But that was payback for was. something that he had Absolutely. done to you? He walked in the trailer, he goes, What the heck is that? Hey! What's that smell? Oh my god! Look at that. We got it all on film, it's great. That's good Charlie Sheen! Was that your question? That was my question. Oh, okay. thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Hi. Um, Hi. So, most of us have all seen Princess Bride like 700 times. <laughs> thank um, you. Thank I was you. just curious. What's your, what's your name? Brittany. Yeah. Hi, Brittany. I met you yesterday. Yes. Hi. <laughs> um, I was just wondering how many times you personally have actually watched it start to finish. Have I personally what? How many times you have watched it start to finish? Um, twice. <laughs> That's uh, they're both of them were the premieres. I, got, yeah. I, I listen. I got better things to do in my day than watch myself. <laughs> it's our job to. Have a hard time looking in the mirror. So, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, sir. How are you? Uh, not too bad. I actually have two questions, and they're both about Saw 7. Okay, what's your name? Uh, Scott. Hi, Scott. So, the first one is, what was your reaction to finding out that you'd be coming back for Saw 7? And the other one is, what was your reaction uh, to finding out that, uh, spoiler alert, Gordon was Jigsaw, the, like, you know, for the next time? All along. Uh... <laughs> There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, a, it was interesting. I, I, they'd asked me, the producers, if I wanted to do a second one, would I come back? And I said, I'll come back and do, when you're ready to do the last one, because I wanted to bookend it. I said, I'll be in the first and I'll be in the last. So I kind of knew that call was coming at some point. And, um, you know, I thought it was rather clever the way they tied it all in. You know, they were very yeah, smart, the producers, the way they, f they had a very interesting through line and thread throughout the whole series. And I haven't watched them all, honestly, I don't, you know, God, God bless the Five folks who really have. Bad. I don't recommend sitting down and watching them, binge-watching the sort of, It's not a, I try to do it, it's not a healthy headspace. <laughs> <laughs> the, the producer said to me, don't you want to catch up? I went, you know, I, 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 I get it. <laughs> I, I kind of know what happens, you know. That People get lovely. named and, 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 yeah. So, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Scott. I just love how you say, Game over. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank, you. <laughs> thank you, Scott. God bless you for that. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Uh, Allison. Hi, yeah. I just wanted to say thank you for coming back. I saw you two years ago in Calgary. That's and, right. Uh, actually, I was trying to work up the courage to come get your autograph. Oh, what happened? What? Uh, you can right before come. then was uh, my granddad passed away. So. Uh, oh. Oops. Yeah, and he, he was like the Peter Falk to my French Savage, so oh. the Princess Bride was our thing. So I'm really glad that you came back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> God bless you. Yeah, come, come on by the booth and we'll, we'll, we'll take care. Oh, I, I, I was there yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. So my question for you was, I noticed of late, uh, pretty much ever since Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, you sort of Prince have... Of, or Prince, or Prince of Thieves, Prince that was someone else. Sorry, sorry! Someone else. Sorry. <laughs> She made it tights, tights. Okay. Yeah, that's right. tights <laughs> thieves. Yeah. That other, the other better Robin Hood movie. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you were in. Um, so my question was, uh, would you ever go back and play sort of the swashbuckling hero at all? Because I know in your book you were referencing Errol Flynn and sure. Douglas Fairbanks and all that. Would you ever do something like that again? You know, uh, I'd love to on Broadway. Uh, <laughs> uh, if I got, you know, the right opportunity, the good, uh, right, the right script and a good part, sure, I would love to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I studied all those guys growing up. I studied Errol Flynn, and Burt Lancaster, and, you know, all of them. <laughs> Um, and so I grew up all around all those movies, those swashbuckling films. So that really helped inform me when I played both those roles. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. The next, please. Hi. Hi. Now, you've had a great career, okay? Thank you. You've had many fantastic roles, Thank lots you. of big ones. You know, I'm a huge fan of you, I won't lie. 
That's why I'm gonna ask you about the Princess Bride. You get a lot of questions about the Princess Bride? Do I what? You get a lot of questions about the Princess Bride? No, not many. Not really? No. <laughs> I just, I gotta know. Again, anybody in this room, uh, we again, we watch the movie all the time. You're funny, what's your name? I'm Jeremy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> um, so, we all watch the movies. Again and again and again and again and again and again and again. again. He's not funny at all. I need to, I need <laughs> to know. When, yes. you, uh, when you were making the movie, did you know that you were making something that was going to resound for decades? Oh, you were very sweet. You know, uh, when you make a film, you hope for the best. Nobody sets out to make a bad movie, believe it or not. But you had to know something. You know, even the guys who make films that you, you sit and, and watch and you go, wait a minute. <laughs> really? Those guys thought they were making the best darn film they could make. You know? and, and, you know, if you're lucky enough with time, you know, if you're blessed enough as an actor or a filmmaker to be a part of something that's very special, you're blessed. It's, it's like icing on the cake because to make a film is really like raising a child. It takes a village. I mean, it's an enormous amount of people that, 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 that put enormous hours and, and all of their skills at work to make a film. And so, you know, when you're finished with a movie, you pray and hope once it gets out in the theaters that it'll do well because everybody involved with it wants to feel a sense of pride in their work, yeah? And um, Princess Bride, we thought we had a shot at it, but it, when it came out, it didn't do very well, believe it or not. We opened the same weekend as, um, gosh, what did we open with? Uh, what's that film, Michael Douglas? Fatal Attraction. Yeah, which took out, I mean, you, you know, we had a title, Princess Bride, kids, everyone thought it was a, a little girl's movie or something, you know, or, or a kid's movie. And so people largely stayed away, and, and the poster they made for it was uh, Fred Savage and, and Peter Falk in a rocking chair. Very beautiful poster, as I'm sure you've seen. But it didn't really give an idea of the swashbuckling, fun adventure. And the studio didn't know how to sell it. Yep. They were like, is it a comedy? Is it an adventure film? Is it romantic? Is it yep. Yep. fantasy? They didn't know how to sell it, so they were stumped. So the film came out and kind of disappeared. Um, and it wasn't until VHS came out. How many people have their VHS copies here? There you go, look at that. Give yourselves a round of applause. It's awesome. I can't. I still meet folks who come up with their old mangled VHS. You know, this looks like a cat furball tape everywhere, and they're like, "Oh, you're sorry, this one. It's great." And um, thanks to the VHS phenomenon, people started renting it, then buying it, and giving it as gifts to friends and family. And before long, it caught on, and then uh, <clears throat> DVD sales, so on, yeah, uh, cable. And I remember I was ten years after the movie came out. I was in a restaurant in. Uh, and we'd all given up on the film. We'd all thought, okay, well, great, but no one saw it, whatever, right? And I'm in a restaurant in New York, and I'm ordering a hamburger, and the waitress says, uh, how do you want that cooked? And I went, oh, medium rare, please. And he goes, as you wish. <laughs> and I went, excuse me? <laughs> and she goes, and she winked at me, and she goes, you know. <laughs> like that. And I couldn't believe it. I thought, that's so wonderful and marvelous and fun that the film that had been mostly dead for 10 years suddenly came back to life. And thanks to all you wonderful folks, you know, now it's this thing that's bigger than all of us. And we're, we're, I, can, I can think I can speak on behalf of everyone involved in making the film that we all feel so blessed that you all love this film, really, truly. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jeremy. Next question. Thank you. Hi, Terry. I'm so Hi. thrilled that you're here. And that I get to ask you this question. I thought of it this morning. Uh, you were filming in Britain, which all I hear about Britain is that it's mostly cold. And yes. having worn this outfit now, I wonder, were you freezing the entire time you were in there? Yes. It was very, very cold. It was colder for, believe it or not, for Robin, who wasn't used to that climate. I grew up in England, so for me it was sort of an, you know, every, all the British crew, it was normal. But for all the Americans on the crew, that, it was quite a, a shock for them to come into that. Robin, bless her heart, they put all the makeup they could, her nose never stopped being red. Yeah. <laughs> if you, you know, she was freezing. And Andre would put his hand, which was the size of a baseball mitt, to keep her warm, he would put it on her head. <laughs> and, and you could cover her eyes with her fingers and everything. And it kept her warm. Her it was great. She said it was like having a hot water bottle on her head all day. <laughs> So, yeah, we lost a few days to, to rain and drizzle and stuff, you know, because that's the only thing you can't control when you're outdoor shooting is the weather, and especially in England. 
Uh, you know, you can, you can get all four seasons in one day sometime, you know, it's sunny in the morning and by lunch it's, it's hail, you know, it's crazy. So, um, yeah, that was, it was, it was cold, actually, especially for her jumping into that, uh, uh, the, 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 the swimming pool they created for the shrieking eels. That was freezing. <laughs> and they couldn't warm that water because it was a giant swimming pool that they did, you know? So she was very brave. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. What's your name? It's Erin. Hi, Erin. First of all, I want to say you play an excellent good guy, and you play a really good bad guy. Thank you. Uh, Brits tend to get the bad guy roles a lot. <laughs> um, my question is about Prince of Thieves. Or, oh, my God. <laughs> I need to watch Prince of Thieves. Give me a minute. Actually, I, I thoroughly enjoyed your singing in the movie and was wondering, are you thinking of doing anything more with your singing? singing on Broadway Suite. Uh, I think once the producers of The Princess Bride on Broadway hear me sing, it'll be a very polite thank you. <laughs> Next. Um, um, I don't have the best singing voice. In fact, I told Mel Brooks when we did Prince of Prince of Prince of Thieves. Prince of Thieves, I said, well, I don't sing very well, and I can assure you that you will want to get a double. He goes, no, no, don't worry, we'll fix it in post. You know, and so uh, that you, you know, I sung that one song, "The Night Is Young," but I, I was too afraid to do any other numbers after that. Because I just like I can't listen to my own voice. You do have a wonderful voice. Huh? You do have a wonderful voice. You're very sweet. <laughs> You're the only person in the world who thinks so other than my daughter. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Hello. Hello. Hi. What's your name? My name is Kelsey. Hi, Kelsey. Um, How are you? I'm, I'm really well, thank you. Good. Um, I don't really have a question, I just wanted to thank you for coming out. We've all grown up with your movies. I watched The Princess Bride for the first time when I was six, uh -huh. and it inspired me to get into fencing when awesome. I got older, which I was actively terrible at, but really, really enjoyed. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and Did you I learn left-handed? Uh, I attempted... And it's hard, isn't it? It is, and fighting lefty fencers is the worst. Yes. But I know that I think you inspired all of us with that as well because we used to have Princess Bride coat wars as we were sparring oh, most cool. weeks. Thank you. Awesome. So I, I want to thank you for that so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, Carrie. Hi, um, how are you? Good. Um, my question is, okay, so you did movies like Hot Shots yes. and Robin Hood Men in Tights, yes. which are funny movies. Woo! Woo! Um, because it's such a dark movie, did mm. you find you had to go into a dark place to play that character? Um, well, you know, obviously making comedies and making dramas are very different. You know, if I'm doing a movie about a serial killer, that definitely, uh, you know, you're in a definitely different headspace <laughs> playing that. Uh, for Saw, it was, it was more playing the victim. So uh, I had a lot of screaming and yelling and crying to do. And I was chained to a wall for the most part. And, and myself and the, and the other guy in the movie opposite me, we were literally chained with chains to a pipe, a real pipe. And it was a real old bathroom. So it was a pretty nasty place to be in. And we had to wear the same clothes for the 18 day shoot. And so the clothes started to really get angry smelling by day four. Um, and uh, there was only one guy who had the key to our locks. Uh, we used to keep an eye on him. Uh, you know, wherever he walked, we'd be like, where is he? There, oh, there he is, right. Because, you know, if you had to take a bathroom break, it was a whole thing. Take the leg chain off, unchain you, go, and they had to, the set was sealed. Um, that's how James Wan was able to film, you know, 360 around the room, because they literally, the, the scenic painters, were in the, on the set with us with their cans of paint and brushes and they would seal the wall and paint it over every time we shot a scene so that James could actually be inside a room that was closed. And so it was quite intense uh, 
you know, I don't meet many Princess Bride Saw crossover fans. It's very rare. <laughs> Although I have met some fans who've got As You Wish on one arm and Game Over on the other, which is <laughs> very bizarre. Well, very I'm bizarre one of your mixture. Rare fans that loves Princess Bride and Saw. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hi, okay. what's your name? This is Margaret. Hello, Margaret. Aren't you sweet? How old? That's the greatest age. <laughs> Hello, little Margaret. How are you? Can you ask a question? Hello. Do you like the Legos? Oh. What'd she say? She's so cute. I can't take it. What? What'd she say? She wants to know if you like tomatoes because this morning she picked one from her garden for you, but she forgot it at home. If you like tomatoes, if you like tomatoes, I need a hug. <laughs> She said, do you like bagels? <laughs> Seemed like that. Okay. That was really cute. So sweet. Thank oh. you. She picked a tomato for me. Yeah. <laughs> you can't beat that. Carrie, um, I have an eight-year-old, by the way. Oh. And it keeps getting better. Greatest production I ever made. Oh. Yeah. It's a little of a budget. But, wait. <laughs> but honestly, the greatest thing I'll ever do. And uh, congratulations. You didn't know you had that much love inside of you, I bet. <laughs> Crazy love. Yeah. Keeps you safe, keeps you insane at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. Yes. This is my fanboy moment. Oh, okay. Can I have a selfie? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to that time. Put your hands together for the lovely Mr. Terry Ellis.